Hi everybody, my name is Ross and I am going to show you my process for creating fantasy land masses. Um, so to start out you are going to want some sort of um, GIS software and so here I have an open source one, QGIS is called, it's free, it's, um, it's pretty robust um, and you can get it obviously on Windows, Mac, Linux, whatever you want. Um, so it, it's great and it does some good stuff. Otherwise you can use ArcGIS or I've heard of some other ones, but um, this one's free and you can do what this tutorial will tell you to do. Uh, I'm also including a Google Drive link to this folder where uh, you can get the, the same file I'm working with if you want to see um, exactly. And then you also need an image processing uh, like Photoshop or GIMP. I'm going to be using Photoshop because I don't have GIMP or really know how to use it and I'm also kind of a Photoshop noob too. So, but you'll need those things. Um, so yeah, before you get started. Um, but otherwise, if you want to get the data we're going to be using, you can go to this website, which I'll include a link. This is just USGS uh, elevation data. And so I think we're using something around here in Colorado. So you can find products in the within the map extent um, and it'll return with something and you can look at all the results and then you can choose a different uh, digital elevation model that you find would better suit your needs or something. If you know some real world topography that you'd kind of like to reference your world after then um, this is what it's for. This is only US but there are other portals too and just feel free to reach out to me if you, if you need some links. But yeah so I just picked one from around here and downloaded it and now I'm going to open it in my GIS software and so I'll this is QGIS interface and I'll come over here where it says add raster layer on the left it looks like a little checkerboard thing um, and here is my where I downloaded it here's my folder I'm gonna go into this folder and click this ADF file this DBLBND ADF um, and it's different in ArcGIS too. So here we go. We've got our digital elevation model, and the high, the light areas are high elevation, and the dark areas are low elevation, and gray is anywhere in between. So, uh oh, just loading. Cool. So we're going to use this real-world data to create fantasy landmass, and so how we're going to do it is by just changing the style here. So from color gradient black to white, we don't want a single band gray, we want single band pseudo color. So what I did is I double click on the, the layer in this panel over here, and I'll go to the style tab right here and click render under render type, single band pseudo color. And just for intuitive purposes, I'm gonna pick this green to blue um, green to blue one um, but I gotta click on and off so there we go so now it's gonna classify all the elevation data into these one two three four five classes and so in between these ranges 129 to 340 it's gonna give me this lighter color so if I click apply you can see it's oh actually this is one this one's stretched never mind so that's what we'll want eventually. So now I've just changed the color scheme. I'm actually going to invert it because um, I want the, the light green to be the land and the blue to be water. So the lower elevations will turn into your water. And so instead of linear, we're going to do discrete. And that's what's going to give us our classes. Like this. Um, so yeah, we'll explore this a little bit. So I zoom in here. I say this island looks pretty cool. And I want this to turn into a landmass. You can just look and see what what looks cool and what you think would be a cool landmass. This one would be pretty dope too. Uh, and if you don't see anything, you can also change you can change these uh, these bounds to these ranges. So, uh, instead of 551, let's say I just want 500, and then th that'll change my map here slightly. 600. So now I'm going to take, this has everything greater than 805 as this landmass. So we want everything from this, gr this green 
up. I want to be a landmass for my world. So I, I like this green here. So I'm going to take this hex code, double clicking on the color here to find that, and then double click on the other ones that I want to change to that same one. So the lower one and the higher one. We'll apply those. So now I've got this landmass looking thing with some islands out here, so which is a nice added bonus. And essentially what we're doing is basically just flooding the real world to get these shapes that we want. Um, so yeah, this is what I want as my landmass. And I can zoom out a little bit. And so there's surrounding landmasses too, if I want to include anything like that. But I'm really just focused on this one right here. So I'm going to, uh, if I'm happy with how it is, you can also play around with the, the, the ranges like I said before. But if I'm ha happy with how this is, I'm going to say project. I'm going to save as, I'm going to go to my, my folder, which is in maps and in map tutorial. I'm going to save this as tutorial um, and I'm going to oh whoops well, I guess I'm gonna save it save the file first look at me look at me save as image is what we want to do once we want to export it essentially so you can save yeah just save your file of course We'll go to documents, go to maps, navigate to the folder, tutorial. So I'm going to save it as a PNG. And this is an additional step. So if you just want the shape of your land, um, you just want a land mass that you can customize and get realistic coastlines, then you can, you can continue on and skip this next step here. But um, what I'm going to do here is add realistic hill shading so um, and how we can do that is by going clicking on the layer again so this is our raster layer click on that go to style tab and instead of single band pseudo color go to hill shade and um, what we need to do though is set everything right so in hill shades your light source should always be coming from the north west um, at a, and typically at a 45 degree altitude is where the sun source would be coming from so um, yeah let's adjust this azimuth to 315 and the altitude to 45 and the z factor is something we'll also have to do if I leave it at 1 we're gonna get this weird really dark looking hill shade which isn't optimal so I'm going to go here, I'm going to go just Google setting Z parameter correctly. I'm going to click this first one, this ArcGIS blog. And so if I know the latitude of where this is, and this is around 35, this is in Colorado. So this is like 35 degrees lat north latitude. Uh, so I'm just going to go with 40 and copy this because my, Z my units are in meters. So if I do this, put this instead of that, then I'll get the more realistic hill shade. And what you can do is if you, if this is not what you are wanting out of your um, out of your hill shade, you can uh, exaggerate it too. So I can put this times two, put some Boolean math in there, and it'll recognize it and change it. And now it's a little bit deeper. Um, Typically, you, you might want to keep your hill shades a little bit less. So, um, you know, I can do times 0.5 if I want to die down the original one and just really subtle. Um, so, I'm okay with this. And without changing, having changed the, um, uh, the viewpoint here, like the current extent will be, still be the same. So, as long as you've, you've done that, that's what you want to keep in mind. Um, especially if you're li lining up these two things then I'm gonna do tutorial hill shade and if I I don't think I changed the, the extent but we'll find out because that way when you 
add them into Photoshop your, or your image manipulation uh, software, they will line up very well. So now I'm going to go and open, going to navigate to the map tutorial folder. And here we've got tutorial. So here you have it pretty much. And then everything else, you know, afterwards you can just, um, you know, is personal preference, but this is how I like to make mine. Um, so let's also open the hillshade and let's see how I think they lined up well. Yeah. So I can go here and, you know, zoom in on my coastlines. If I think my coastlines are a little bit too jagged, you can do a filter and you can do noise and you can do median and, you know, play around, see what you like. I, I, I like some detail in the coastlines, but sometimes it can be a bit much. Um, you know, so I'm not, I'm not going to mess around with it right now, but that's something you can do. And anything else here is just for you. So if you want to make a hill shade, um, overlay on this, I'm going to control all copy everything in the hill shade, make a new layer, control V. And so now my hill shade should be directly over this. And the nice thing is it also gives you bathymetry basically because it's the real world elevation. Um, but you can just turn this all to blue and make your own stuff. So if you don't want to create your own hill shade or your own elevation data, then you can use, or you don't want to create your own elevation data for the world you've made. You can use the, the existing one from the world. So what I'm going to do right now, these are both set on normal. I'm going to set the hill shade to linear burn. And we've kind of got that right there. And now we can see the hill shade over it. Uh, and you can mess with your own personal settings here. And um, also you can create like a mask to make sure it only shows um, the land if you want. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit more photo manipulation and I look like a, a fool trying to do it on the fly here because it takes me a little bit. But essentially that, that's my process for creating these realistic looking um, like continents. So if you have any questions, I'm gonna put all the links below. Um, to both QGIS um, and this uh, DEM finder. Um, that way you can get your own data if you want. If there's a real world uh, place you want to mimic your world after or the topography after. Um, and I'll also put this link to this Z parameter if you're interested in the hill shades. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. That's my process for creating continents. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you want to subscribe to my Twitch or follow me on Twitch, I do video game maps. I talk about the design of video game maps and sometimes I do things like these on Twitch as well, just map building um, things. So thanks for watching everybody. Um, I hope you have a good day.